Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today's Monday, September 24th, 2018. A lot to get to today. Football, golf, baseball, power rankings, players of the week, college football power rankings, and guess the lines for week five of the college season. Let's just get right to it. Football Sunday, a lot of crazy upsets, a lot of surprises, and a lot more. The Giants defeat the Texans 27-22 to get their first win of the year. The Giants are 1-2. Houston drops to 0-3. Eli Manning had his best game in a very long time. 25-29, 297 yards, two touchdowns. Deshaun Watson, 24-40, 385 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. So, there you go. Houston's 0-3. They have a pretty big hole to climb out of. Giants salvage perhaps their season with a win here and not really salvage it, but you know what I mean. They keep things alive. Interesting game for them next week as they host the Saints, a 425 game on CBS. The Saints defeat the Falcons 43-37 in overtime. The Saints are 2-1. The Falcons are 1-2. Drew Brees 39-49, 396 yards, 3 touchdowns. Matt Ryan 26-35, 374 yards, 5 touchdowns. Remarkable game for Matt Ryan, considering all that he was missing on offense. The Redskins defeat the Packers 31-17. The Redskins are 2-1. The Packers are 1-1-1. Alex Smith, 12 of 20, 220 yards, two touchdowns with a pick. Aaron Rodgers, 27 of 44, 265 yards, two touchdowns. Big story of this game is that Clay Matthews was called yet again for another roughing the passer call. It's three straight weeks. But this time I don't want to hear that that cost the Packers the game because they were trailing at the time. In that Vikings game, they had the lead at the time and that led to Minnesota's comeback that eventually ended up in a tie. So I don't want to hear that excuse again for the Packers. They're 1-1-1. One and one and, one. and there you got to move on to their next game against, I think, the biggest surprise of Week 3, the Buffalo Bills upsetting the Minnesota Vikings 27-6. In Minnesota, Buffalo wins outright as a 17-point underdog at kickoff. They're 1-2. Minnesota is also 1-1-1. Josh Allen, 15 of 20, 296 yards and a touchdown. Kirk Cousins, 40 of 55, 296 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Bad game for Cousins. They missed Dalvin Cook on offense, so their running game was kind of not around. Loss of Everson Griffin was big. They need those two guys back. They have a big one next week at the Rams. The Eagles defeat the Colts 20 to 16. The Eagles are 2 and 1. The Colts are 1 and 2. Carson Wentz first game back 25 of 37, 255 yards, a touchdown. The pick Andrew Luck 25 of 40, 164 yards, and a touchdown. The Dolphins defeat the Raiders 28 to 20. This was my best bet on the podcast last week. The minus 3, and I was right. Miami's 3 and 0. Oakland's 0 and 3. Ryan Tannehill, 17 of 23, 289 yards, three touchdowns. Derek Carr, 27 of 39, 345 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. The Ravens defeat the Broncos, 27-14. The Ravens are 2-1. and The Broncos are also 2-1. and Joe Flacco, good game. His best one of the year so far, 25 of 40, 277 yards, and a touchdown. Case Keenum, 22 of 34, 192 yards, and a pick. The Panthers defeat the Bengals 31-21. Big win for Carolina. They're 2-1. Cincinnati's 2-1. Cam Newton, 15-24. 150 yards, two touchdowns. Andy Dalton, 29-46. 352 yards, two touchdowns, and four picks. Christian McCaffrey had his best game as a pro rushing-wise. 28 carries, 184 yards. He was my pick to be the biggest breakout star Non-quarterback, I should say, in the league this year. My biggest breakout quarterback star, my pick, was Patrick Mahomes. That's looking pretty good, too. The Titans defeat the Jaguars 9-6. to That's sort of pathetic. Marcus Mariota, 12 for 18, 100 yards. Blaine Gabbert only threw one pass for 8 yards, 3 attempts. Blake Bortles, 21 of 34, 155 yards. The Chiefs defeated the 49ers 38-27. Chiefs are 3-0. The Niners are 1-2. Patrick Mahomes, 24-3, 314 yards, 3 touchdowns. Jimmy Garoppolo, 20-30, 251 yards, 2 touchdowns. C.J. Beathard was in the game, but he didn't attempt any passes. And that's the case because Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt in the game. 
The Niners series a torn ACL. If I have any breaking news to give you about that, I'll certainly give it to you on the podcast. But if that's the case, that's a big loss for the 49ers. And if that's the case, they're certainly going to be in the bottom three in the power rankings tomorrow solely because of that. The Rams defeat the Chargers 35-23. The Rams are 3-0. and The Chargers are 1-2. and Jared Goff, great game. 29-36, 254 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. Phil Rivers, 18-30, 226 yards and two touchdowns. The Seahawks defeat the Cowboys, 24-13. Big win for Seattle to save their season. They're 1-2. and Dallas is 1-2. and Russell Wilson, 16-26, 192 yards, two touchdowns. Dak Prescott, 19-34, 168 yards, a touchdown and two picks. The Bears defeat the Cardinals 16 to 14. The Bears are 2 and 1. The Cards are 0 and 3. Bears come back and rally. They're down 14 nothing. They come back to win the game. Mitch Trubisky 24 of 35, 220 yards and a pick. Sam Bradford 13 of 19, 157 yards, two touchdowns and two picks. He was benched in the fourth corner for Josh Rosen, who was on the field for the final drive. He went four for seven with 36 yards and he threw an interception. The Lions defeat the Patriots 26 to 10. Shocking result. Detroit's 1 and 2. The Patriots are 1 and 2 as well. Matt Stafford 27 to 36, 262 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Tom Brady 14 to 26, 133 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Tonight we have the Steelers and the Bucks. I picked the Bucks on the podcast on Friday. The Bucks are actually a point and a half point favorite now and they deserve to be favored in this game. Since they're 2-0 and in Pittsburgh, it's just a mess right now with all these living on Bell trade rumors. All right. I have to talk about the Tour Championship before I get to baseball. Because Tiger Woods won his first tournament in five years. You got to give the hand for Tiger. That was... I think the biggest thing that happened in sports yesterday, Sands, the Bills upset, the Lions upset, the Play Matthews thing, this was the best thing that happened in sports yesterday. He won $1.6 million with a score of minus 11. Billy Horschel came in second place, earning 972000 with a score of a minus 9. Dustin Johnson third, minus 7, and an earning of 621000 Hideki Matsuyama. And Webb Simpson were tied for fourth with a minus six and an earnings of each of 372,000. Notables, Ricky Fowler, Justin Thomas, and Xavier Shaloff were tied for seventh with a score of a minus five. And Rory McIlroy in there too. And all had earnings of $279,900. Justin Day t- was 18th with a minus 2 with an earning of 180000 Brooks Kepko was in a tie for 26 with a plus 4 and an earning of 150300 Bubba Watson, 29th with a plus 10 and earning of 145800 And Phil Mickelson came in last in 30th with a plus 13 and earnings of 144000 So, what a great story for Tiger Woods. That was just awesome. Baseball. Want to run through the results quick? The Orioles defeat the Yankees 6-3. The O's are 45-110. and The Yanks are 95-60. and Ryan Messinger with the win. A.J. Cole with the loss. Michael Givens with the save. The Rays defeat the Blue Jays 5-2. The Rays are 87 and 68. The Jays are 71 and 85. Blake Snell with the win. Ryan Barocchi with the loss. Sergio Romo with the save. The Royals defeat the Tigers 3 to 2. The Royals are 54 and 102. The Tigers are 63 and 93. Brad Keller with the win. Drew Verhagen with the loss. Willie Peralta with the save. The Marlins defeat the Reds 6 0. The Marlins are 62 and 93. Cincinnati 66 and 91. Trevor Richards with the win. Michael Lorenzen with the loss. The Braves defeat the Phillies 2 to 1. The Braves are 88 and 68. The Phillies are 78 and 77. Annabelle Sanchez with the win. Aaron Nola with the loss. Shane Carl with the save. The Phillies are eliminated from playoff contention with the loss. The Mets defeated the Nationals 8 to 6. The Mets are 73 and 83. The Nats are 78 and 78. Drew Gagnon with the win. Wander Suero with the loss. 
Anthony Swarzak with the save. The Brewers defeat the Pirates 13 to 6. The Brewers are 89 and 67. The Pirates are 78 and 76. Corey Nebel with the win. Nick Kingdom with the loss. The Cubs defeat the White Sox 6 to 1. The Cubs are 91 and 64. The White Sox are 61 and 94. Kyle Hendricks with the win. Carlos Rodon with the loss. The Astros defeat the Angels 6 to 2. The Astros are 98 and 57. The Angels are 75 and 81. From Bear Valdez with the win. Tyler Skaggs with the loss. The Cardinals defeat the Giants 9 to 2. The Cards are 87 and 69. The Giants are 72 and 84. Miles Mikolas with the win. Andrew Suarez with the loss. The Rangers defeat the Mariners 6 to 1. The Rangers are 66 and 89. The Mariners are 85 and 70. Jeffrey Springs with the win. Wade LeBlanc with the loss. The Twins defeat the Athletics 5 to 1. The Twins are 72 and 83. The A's are 94 and 62. Kyle Gibson with the win. Trevor Cahill with the loss. Trevor May with the save. The Dodgers defeat the Padres 14 to nothing. The Dodgers are 87 and 69. The Padres are 62 and 94. Hajin Ryu is 6 and 3. Joey Lachesi is 8 and 9. The Rockies defeat the Diamondbacks 2 nothing. The Rockies are 85 and 70. The Diamondbacks 79 77 and now eliminated from postseason contention. Kyle Freeland with the win. Zach Godley with the loss. Wade Davis with the save. The Indians defeat the Red Sox 4 to 3 in 11 innings. On a walk-off single by Greg Allen, the Indians are 87 and 68. The Red Sox are 105 and 51. Josh Tommy with the win. William Cuevas with the loss. Tonight's games: Yankees Rays, seven o'clock. A little bit of breaking news: the Yankees are going with an opener, and that's Jonathan Holder, Diego Castillo going for the Rays. So I like the strategy by the Yankees going with the opener. I think they should do this in the wild card game personally, but I don't think they'll do it considering how well Jay Happs pitched down the stretch. That's who I think is going to start for them in the wild card game. I'll talk about a little bit in the power rankings what each team should do that is a playoff contender or was just eliminated. Marlins Nationals, Sandy Alcantara and Steven Strasburg, Astros Blue Jays, Dallas Keuchel and Marco Estrada, Orioles Red Sox, Dylan Bundy and Nathan Navaldi. Pirates Cubs at 8 o'clock. Jamison Tyon, Cole Hamels, Indians White Sox, Corey Kluber and Dylan Covey. 815 Brewers Cardinals. Wow, that's a huge series. Dan Jennings and Jack Flaherty. So Brewers going with an opener too. 840 Phillies Rockies. Zach Eflin and John Gray. 940 Dodgers Diamondbacks. Clayton Kershaw and Robbie Ray. Rangers Angels at 10 o'clock. Adrian Sampson and Felix Pena, A's Mariners, Daniel Mengden and James Paxton, and 10-15 Padres Giants, Brian Mitchell and Derek Holland. Power rankings. I'm going to go from 30 to 1 as I do each and every week. I'm just going to do the bottom 10, and then I'll talk about each team that was eliminated that's in the top 20. Orioles are 30, Royals 29, White Sox 28, Marlins 27, Padres 26, 25 Tigers, 24 Reds, 23 Giants, 22 Rangers, 21 Blue Jays. The Twins are 20. The Mets are 19. They're playing a little bit better to be out of the bottom 10. The Angels are 18. Shohei Otani's continuing his case for Ale Rookie of the Year. I don't think he wins it. 17th, the Nationals. They're just eliminated. Bryce Harper's in perhaps his final week as a member of the Nationals. 16 is the Pirates. Playing out the string as well. Jamison Tyon's been a star in the second half of the year. 15 is the Phillies. They're done. Now they look ahead to the offseason and chances they sign Bryce Harper and Manny Machado away from the Dodgers and the Nationals, respectively. 14 is the Diamondbacks. They're done, too. I'm interested to see what they do this offseason. That could be a possible surprise seller with Paul Goldschmidt being a free agent after the 2019 season. So keep an eye on that. We'll get more into off-season predictions and stuff after the playoffs is over. 13's the Mariners. They're eliminated, too. I think Scott Cervais is a candidate to get fired. 12 is the Tampa Bay Rays. Let's see if they hurt the Yankees' chances of getting home field advantage in the wild card game. 11's the Rockies who are still in this race, a game and a half back of the Dodgers, a game and a half back in the wild card. They need some help from the loser of Cardinals, Rockies, and the Dodgers, obviously, whoever they're playing. 
Oh, the Diamondbacks. But I think the Diamondbacks are just done. They think they're disinterested. Tennis, the Braves, they have been at least locked up. Now it's a matter of do they play at home in round one or on the road in round one. I didn't even realize that they have a better record than the Dodgers. Ninth, the Cardinals. Eighth, the Brewers. These two teams are playing each other within the next couple days. Winner of this series, I think, will end up with home field advantage of the wild card game. Although, if somebody sweeps, then the Rockies can jump into that spot, so don't sleep on Colorado. Seven's the Athletics. They had a disappointing week, in my opinion. Failed to take advantage of the Yankees a little bit and then lost some games that they shouldn't have lost at home. Six, the Dodgers. They're playing very well right now. They're going to clinch to Edel West at some point this week. Five, the Cubs. Still haven't clinched a playoff spot, let alone the division title yet. That's surprising to me. Four is the Yankees. They had a good week. They've won two out of three against the Red Sox. And they did drop yesterday the Orioles, but Aaron Boone rested some regulars and can't really fault them for that loss. They clinched the playoff spot, and uh, now they have to fight off the A's for home field advantage. Three is the Red Sox. They lost two out of three of the Yankees, and I believe they lost two out of three of the Indians, too. They're just um, prepping for the playoffs now. Two's the Indians. Great series went over the Red Sox. I think that team's poised for big things in October. Number one's the Astros. They had a very good week this week. And for the first time in a long time, the Red Sox are not number one on the power rankings. That's because they really have been just playing out the string after clinching the AL East a little bit. Even though they played their regulars against the Yankees because they want to clinch that in Yankee Stadium, and I applaud them for that. The reason why they're not number one is because they didn't win those games. And their biggest issue, what I've been saying all season, has finally erupted, and that is the bridge to Craig Kimbrell. And because that's not figured out, they might be going home in the ALDS against the Yankees or the Athletics. Breaking NFL news, Jimmy Garoppolo, it's officially as a torn ACL. This absolutely sucks for the 49ers and their fans. They had expectations this year, and rightfully so, because of Garoppolo and how well he performed down the stretch last year and pretty much got the Niners out of picking from the top five in the draft to get a transcendent talent like a Saquon Barkley or a Bradley Chubb or Denzel Ward. And they end up picking ninth. And in this year, expectations, they get a lot of primetime games, and bam, their quarterback's out with a torn ACL. Garoppolo's season's over, and so is the 49ers. This is just heartbreaking. And now you have to wonder if they're going to try to salvage their season and go try to trade for a veteran that is an overqualified backup like a Teddy Bridgewater, will New Orleans do that after trading for him from the Jets? Or like maybe an A.J. McCarron from the Raiders, perhaps? That would be a solid option. I saw reports that they're bringing in Tom Savage for a workout. Oh, yeah, and there's this guy named uh, Colin Kaepernick that ironically used to play for the 49ers. Then the 49ers dumped because he wouldn't stand for the national anthem. And, oh, yeah, he's not that great of a quarterback. He was a product of Jim Harbaugh. Oh, well. But, yeah, I feel sorry for the Niners. I guess C.J. Beathard's going to be their starter going forward unless they pull off a trade for somebody or sign somebody off the market that is at least somewhat competent. College football power rankings before I get to them. Players of the Week for Baseball, I'm going to go with Uleski Guriel of the Astros. He was on fire this week, as well as Jock Peterson of the Dodgers. They both had multi-homer games this week, and I believe Guriel had a three-homer game. College Football Power Rankings. We go from 130 to 1, as I always do. 130 is UTEP. 129 San Jose State. 128 is Texas State. 127 is New Mexico State. New Mexico State actually beat UTEP, so the loser of that game was going to be 130. 126 is Rice, 125 is Georgia State, 124 is Louisiana, 123 Yukon, 122 Liberty, 121 Bowling Green, 120 Kent State, 119 Charlotte, 
who just lost to 118 UMass, 117 South Alabama, 116 Western Kentucky, who beat one of these teams about to mention over the weekend, but I'm still not confident in this team. 115 is Georgia Southern, 114 is UTSA, 113 is Ball State, that's who lost to Western Kentucky. 112 is Coastal Carolina, got the big upset over Louisiana. 111 is Central Michigan, 110 is Miami of Ohio, 109 is Tulsa, 108 is Tulane, 107 is New Mexico, 106 is East Carolina, 105 is Colorado State, 104 Rutgers, 103 Air Force, 102 Wyoming, 101 is Middle Tennessee, 100 is Akron, 99 is UAB, 98 is Louisiana Tech, 97 is FIU, 96 is Kansas, 95 is UNLV, 94 is UCLA, 93 Arkansas, 92 Old Dominion, 91 Southern Miss, 90 Marshall, 89 Western Michigan, 88 UL Monroe, 87 Illinois, 86 SMU, 85 Utah State, 84 Navy, 83 Georgia Tech, 82 Nevada, 81 Northern Illinois, 80 Ohio, 79 Kansas State, 78 Northwestern, 77 Hawaii, 76 Eastern Michigan, 75 Pitt, 74 North Carolina, 73 Louisville, 72 Wake, 71 Oregon State, 70 Tennessee, 69 Vandy, 68 Toledo, 67 Arkansas State, 66 FAU, 65 Troy, 64 Army, 63 Virginia, 62 Minnesota, 61 Florida State, 60 Fresno State, 59 Buffalo, 58 North Texas, 57 Appalachian State, 56 Baylor, 55 San Diego State, 54 Nebraska, 53 Iowa State, 52 Arizona State, 51 Purdue, who finally won a game. 50 Temple, 49 Cincinnati, 48 Arizona, 47 Missouri, 46 Ole Miss, 45 Memphis, 44 Syracuse, 43 NC State, 42 Indiana, 41 Houston, 40 South Florida, 39 Iowa, excruciating loss to Wisconsin, 38 Utah, who I don't think has been impressive, 37 Wazoo, lost a competitive game to the USC, I can't fault them for that, USC is just a better team, 36 Virginia Tech, what the heck? Losing the Old Dominion. They should be lower than this, but the other thing is they lost their quarterback, more importantly, and that's probably why they lost that game. 35 is South Carolina, 34 Florida. Both of these teams with good wins over the weekend. 33 is Texas A&M. What else are you going to do? Nobody beats Alabama and Tuscaloosa. 32 Boston College. Late in egg at Purdue. 31 Boise State. Coming off a bye, they lost to Oklahoma State, who lost to Texas Tech. They have Wyoming this upcoming week. 30 is Oklahoma State, who defeated Boston College in week three, lost to Texas Tech last week. Now, this upcoming week, they're at, at Kansas, and this team seems Jekyll and Hyde to me. 29 is Cal. They're ranked. 28 is Colorado. They probably should be ranked. They're pretty good. 27 is USC. Big time win over Wazoo, even though it was a close game. Clay Halton might have saved his job, and USC might have saved their season a little bit there. 26 is Maryland. Good bounce back win over Minnesota. 25 is TCU. They lost to Texas. They're now 2-2. Two and two. Big game for them this week against Iowa State. 24 is Duke. I think this team is pretty solid, and they deserve to be ranked. 23 is Texas Tech. What a turnaround for them. They lose to Ole Miss in the first week of the season, and they turn it on, beating FCS school. Just You don't really take much into that. They beat Houston, which was a good win, and they get another good win in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Big-time game for them on Saturday afternoon against West Virginia. 22, Oregon. Absolutely brutal loss to Stanford. 21's Mississippi State. Disappointing loss against Kentucky over the weekend. 20's BYU, who's exceeded all expectations. They have a big game coming up against Washington. 19 is Michigan State. Great bounce back win for them over Indiana in a game that many people thought they'd lose. 18 is Kentucky. They're undefeated and deserve to be ranked. 17's Texas, 
Way to rebound from that disaster against Maryland. They've won a couple in a row. They won a close call against Tulsa. I just think they were looking ahead to the USC game, which they really made a statement in that game. And then they go out and beat TCU at home. I think the USC win was more impressive than TCU. But who knows how these, those two teams' seasons will turn out to be. And I'm just saying that because USC got a, the big win over Wazoo at home. But they barely beat Wazoo. And then the week before the TCU game, TCU lost to Ohio State. And maybe that's what it is with Texas. But hey, give Texas and Tom Herman credit. They're 3-1 and one and they're ranked and they deserve to be in the top 25, even with that Maryland loss. And hey, maybe Maryland's better than giving credit for and that Temple debacle is just a bad game for Maryland. 16 is Miami. They've come a long way since the LSU loss. 15 is Michigan. Same thing. I feel like they've come a long way since the Notre Dame loss. They've been playing a lot better. 14 is Wisconsin. Good bounce back win after that BYU loss. 13 is UCF. They're the best group of five team right now. 12 is Washington, who is not that inspired to me. They have an interesting one this weekend against BYU. 11 is West Virginia. They destroyed Kansas State in a game which I thought that Kansas State would hang around in. I was right about West Virginia getting off to a slowish start offensively, but I thought their defense would get off to a bit of a slow start too, but their defense is probably the unit I overlooked among the contenders in the Big 12. I'm talking about the Mountaineers' defense in terms of overlooked units in the Big 12. 10 is Penn State. They have a big one this weekend against Ohio State. They survived in Champaign. Illinois actually had the lead in the third quarter in that game, and Penn State came back and won. Nine, Auburn. Took care of business against Arkansas. Eight is LSU, who pulled away late from Louisiana Tech. They have an interesting one against Ole Miss this week. Seven's Oklahoma. Barely survived against Army. Six is Notre Dame. Had their best performance of the season, I thought. At Wake Forest, they changed quarterbacks. That tended to work out for them. Although the Michigan win is probably their biggest win because it's Michigan. But that Wake Forest performance, I think, was the most impressive considering that they're on the road. And sometimes that program over the last few years has struggled in road games that are 12 o'clock starts. And they tend to look ahead. Just like the NC State game, I believe that was two years ago. And they're getting points in that game, too, ironically enough. Five is Stanford. They had a phenomenal win at Oregon on the road at nighttime. I'm surprised how low they're ranked in the AP poll. I'll get to that in a minute. They have a big game coming up on Saturday at Notre Dame, ironically enough, for Ohio State. They've looked like the best team in the Big Ten so far this season. They have a big one on Saturday in Penn State, in State College. Three is Clemson. One big at Georgia Tech, like I thought. Two is Georgia. They went comfortably at Missouri. And number one, Alabama. That's not changing until they lose. I'm sorry. It's the... Tied and everybody else to me, although Georgia and Clemson are right there for two and three. And Ohio State is arguably with those three teams, or those two teams, I should say. But who knows? Things can change. I'm going to go over the AP poll real quick before I do guess the lines. It's interesting, considering that there is a lot of movement in the top 25 with some near upsets and with some upsets. Number one's Alabama, two Georgia, three Clemson, four Ohio State, five LSU, six Oklahoma, seven Stanford, eight Notre Dame, nine Penn State, ten Auburn, eleven Washington, twelve West Virginia, thirteen UCF, fourteen Michigan, fifteen Wisconsin, sixteen Miami, seventeen Kentucky, eighteen Texas, nineteen Oregon, twenty BYU, twenty-one Michigan State, twenty-two Duke. 23 Mississippi State, 24 Cal, 25 Texas Tech. At this week, some point, I think I want to do 
some of the contenders in college football with best wins and best losses and go over chances some of these surprise teams actually stick around late and some contenders that could potentially flop within the next couple weeks. Like, for example, who's likely to have a bad loss like Wisconsin did against BYU, but that might not even be a bad loss anymore because BYU is 20th in the country. Got to give credit to where credit's due sometimes. All right, to the lines. Thursday night I have Miami, who's number 16, at, or I'm sorry, hosting North Carolina. I have Miami as minus 23 and a half. Miami's 18 and a half, so I was off on that one. Memphis at Tulane Friday night. I have Memphis minus 7. Memphis is minus 14, so it's doubled what I thought. UCLA at Colorado Friday night. I have Colorado minus 13 and a half. Colorado's minus 10. I think that is a steal for Colorado. Saturday. One Alabama hosting Louisiana. I have the tied by 51. The tighter giving 49, so two points off. Number three, Clemson hosting Syracuse. I have Clemson minus 28. Clemson's minus 22 and a half, so I went too high there. My favorite 12 o'clock game. For this upcoming weekend, number 12, West Virginia at number 25, Texas Tech. I have the Mountaineers as a seven-point favorite. The Mountaineers are giving three and a half. That line's weird. Central Michigan at number 21, Michigan State. I have Michigan State minus 35 and a half. Michigan State's giving 28 and a half, so I was a touchdown off there. Indiana at Rutgers. I have Indiana minus 10 and a half. Indiana's minus 17. Arkansas against Texas A&M from AT&T Stadium in Dallas. I have A&M minus 20 and a half. A&M's minus 20, so a half point off. Army at Buffalo. Buffalo minus 7. Buffalo is minus 9. Oklahoma State at Kansas. I have the Cowboys minus 27 and a half. The Cowboys are minus 18, so I probably overrated the Cowboys a little bit or even underestimated the Jayhawks. Maybe I'm just judging the Jayhawks because they're still Kansas. Temple at Boston College, I have BC minus 12 and a half. BC is minus 14, so a point and a half off there. Bowling Green at Georgia Tech, I have Georgia Tech minus 34. Georgia Tech's giving 27 and a half, so I went too high there with the Yellow Jackets. Virginia at NC State, I have the Wolfpack laying 7. The Wolfpack are laying 7, so that's my first correct pick. UMass at Ohio, I have Ohio minus 24. Ohio's laying 13, so I overrated the Bobcats there. UL Monroe at Georgia State, I have UL Monroe minus 8.5, and, and they're giving 8, so a half point off. Kent State at Ball State, I have Ball State minus 8, Ball State is minus 8.5, again, a half point off. Tennessee at number 2, Georgia, I have Georgia minus 33.5, Georgia's giving 31.5, two points off there. Baylor at number 6, Oklahoma, I have Oklahoma minus 30.5, Oklahoma's minus 23.5. I probably overrated the Sooners and underrated Baylor there. Pitt at number 13, UCF, I have UCF minus 14.5. UCF is giving 15 and a half point off. Number 18, Texas at Kansas State. I have the Longhorns favored by eight and a half. And that is what the Longhorns are giving. So my second correct pick. Cincinnati at UConn. I have Cincinnati minus 17. Cincinnati is minus 17. So my third correct pick. Old Dominion at East Carolina. I have East Carolina minus seven and a half. East Carolina is giving five. So it's two and a half points off there. Coastal Carolina at Troy. I have Troy minus eight and a half. Troy is minus 14, so I underrated Troy a little bit there. Western Michigan at Miami of Ohio, I have as a pick I couldn't really decide on what the pick there, and I knew that this would be a short line, and it is. Miami of Ohio is giving two, so it's two points off there. South Alabama at Appalachian State, I have the Mountaineers by 18 and a half. They're giving 25, so I was off there. Rice at Wake Forest, I have Wake minus 32. Wake's giving 25 and a half. I think that's a little low. Purdue at Nebraska, I have Nebraska laying 11 and a half. Purdue's giving three. That's my biggest discrepancy so far, although my next one's a pretty big discrepancy too. I think that line is out of whack. I think that Nebraska is probably better than what they've shown so far. And maybe I'm just underselling Purdue a little bit because they're 1-3, and three, although all those games are close other than their win. Florida State at Louisville. I have Louisville minus 5.5. Florida State's actually giving 6, so that's a big discrepancy there. 
Southern Miss at number 10, Auburn. I have Auburn minus 40 and a half. Auburn's giving only 27 and a half. That, that was a big discrepancy, too. Tennessee State's at Vanderbilt. That's an FCS school. Can't pick that. Nevada at Air Force. I have Air Force minus six and a half. Air Force is giving six and a half, so that's my fourth correct pick. Number 14, Michigan at Northwestern. I have Michigan laying 14. Michigan's laying 13 and a half, so half point off. Florida at number 23, Mississippi State. I have the Bulldogs laying 16 and a half. The Bulldogs are only laying seven and a half, so I overrated the Bulldogs there. Utah at Wazoo. I have Wazoo minus six. Utah's minus one. I think that's a bogus line. Wazoo should be favored at home, in my opinion. Liberty at New Mexico. I have New Mexico minus three. And New Mexico is minus seven. Arkansas State at Georgia Southern. I have State minus ten and a half. And Arkansas State is giving only four. Northern Illinois at Eastern Michigan. I have Eastern Michigan minus six and a half. And Eastern Michigan's giving three and a half. Three points off there. Virginia Tech at number 22 Duke. I have Duke minus six. Duke is giving five. So one point off there. Houston Baptist at SMU, not doing, because Houston Baptist is FCS. UTEP at UTSA. UTSA, I like giving 17 and a half, and they're giving 10 and a half, so it's a touchdown off. FAU at Middle Tennessee, I have FAU minus 4 and a half, and that's what the line is, so that's my fifth correct pick. Boise State at Wyoming, I have Boise minus 7 and a half. Boise's giving 16 and a half, so it's way off there. Hawaii at San Jose State, I have Hawaii minus 12 and a half. And Hawaii's giving 13, so it's a half point off. Charlotte at UAB. I have UAB minus 7. UAB's giving 17. I think that's a high line. Iowa State at TCU. I have TCU giving 16.5. TCU's giving 10.5, so it's six points off there. Ohio State at Penn State. I think that the number four team in the country will be favored by two points over the ninth ranked team in the country. And indeed, number four, Ohio State. Minus three and a half at Penn State, so it's only a point and a half off there. Number seven, Stanford at number eight, Notre Dame. I have Notre Dame minus three. Notre Dame is minus four and a half, a point and a half off there. Number 20, BYU at number 11, Washington. I have Washington minus 15 and a half. Washington's giving 17 and a half, so that's the same line as the Arizona State game. So I guess Vegas values those two teams the same. So two points off on that one. South Carolina at Kentucky. Kentucky's number 17 now. And I have Kentucky giving 7.5. Kentucky's giving 1.5, so six points off there. Arkansas's Pine Bluff at FIU. Not going to make a guess for that one because Pine Bluff is FCS. Louisiana Tech at North Texas. I have North Texas giving 13.5. North Texas is giving 7.5. That line is low. Marshall at Western Kentucky. I have Marshall minus 4. Marshall's giving 6, so two points off there. Ole Miss at number 5, LSU. LSU, I have giving 27.5. LSU is only giving 12. That's low. Oregon State at Arizona State, I have the Sun Devils giving 16. And the Sun Devils are giving 21.5. Number 19, Oregon at number 24, Cal. I have Oregon minus 3 at Cal. And that is the correct line. So that's five correct picks so far. Oh, I'm sorry, six. USC at Arizona, I have the Trojans by 5.5. The Trojans are favored by 3. Toledo at Fresno State. I have Fresno State minus six and a half, and Fresno State's favored by it, so it was a point and a half off there. I did pretty good this week with a few discrepancies. I got more picks correct, I feel like, than I did with picks I had way off. And that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the Monday Night Football game as well as the baseball games from tonight. Look ahead to tomorrow a little bit. I'll also be doing my NFL Week 4 Power Rankings and Guess the Lines, and I'll be doing my 2008 MLB Redraft. And I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.